Catholics believe that after Mary's life was completed, Christ assumed his mother's body and soul into heaven to share in the glory of his resurrection. It's the same exalted gift the rest of God's family, the Church, is destined to receive at the end of time. But does the assumption of the Blessed Mother mean she didn't experience bodily death? Some well-meaning Catholics today may insist Mary did not die, citing that death is a consequence of original sin, which Mary didn't have. But Pope St. John Paul II taught otherwise. He states, The fact that the Church proclaims Mary free from original sin by a unique divine privilege does not lead to the conclusion that she also received physical immortality. The Mother is not superior to the Son who underwent death, giving it new meaning and changing it into a means of salvation. An ambiguous phrase in Pope Pius XII's dogmatic definition of the Assumption is often referenced to justify the theory of Mary's deathless entrance into heaven. It states, The Immaculate Mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. But while it's true that Catholics are free to speculate whether Mary passed away physically or not, the common tradition of the Church, both East and West, and many popes, including Pius XII himself, insisted that Mary died and was buried in a tomb before God reunited her uncorrupted body with her spirit. This mystery has always been known as the Dormition or falling asleep of the Mother of God. It's the apostolic account of her funeral rites as found in numerous early church records and seen in countless ancient icons, which depict a reverse Madonna or adult Christ holding the childlike soul of his mother, while the apostles tend to the burial of her body, which would be taken up by God shortly afterward. John Paul II clarified Pius XII's original intention about Mary's Dormition. My venerable predecessor, Pius XII, made no pronouncement on the question of Mary's death. Nevertheless, Pius XII did not intend to deny the fact of her death, but merely did not judge it opportune to affirm solemnly the death of the Mother of God as a truth to be accepted by all believers. Some theologians have in fact maintained that the Blessed Virgin did not die, and was immediately raised from earthly life to heavenly glory. However, this opinion was unknown until the 17th century, whereas a common tradition actually exists which sees Mary's death as her entry into heavenly glory. Pius XII actually referred several times to Mary's death in his proclamation of her assumption. In one example, he cites Pope Adrian. Venerable to us, O Lord, is the festivity on this day on which the Holy Mother of God suffered temporal death, but still could not be kept down by the bonds of death, who has begotten your Son, our Lord, incarnate from herself. Pius also included a prayer from Byzantine liturgy. He has kept your body incorrupt in the tomb, and has glorified it by his divine act of transferring it from the tomb. Many Eastern Catholic churches still celebrate a two-week fast before the Feast of the Dormition and Assumption on August 15th. In fact, in Jerusalem, Christians gather at Mary's tomb in the Abbey of the Dormition to commemorate her death on August 13th and Assumption on August 15th. The particular details of how or when Mary died, or how she was taken to heaven, are not central to the mystery of her Assumption, which serves as another sign of God's promise of salvation. Pope St. John Paul II best sums up the meaning of Mary's death as her loving desire to be fully conformed to her Son. Involved in Christ's redemptive work and associated in his saving sacrifice, Mary was able to share in his suffering and death for the sake of humanity's redemption. The experience of death personally enriched the Blessed Virgin. By undergoing mankind's common destiny, she can more effectively exercise her spiritual motherhood towards those approaching the last moment of their life.